After recording data, complete data reports and analysis using free downloadable BSL-4 analysis-only software. Let's go through an analysis example. We're going to take a look at the recording and data report for Lesson 5. Descriptions of all waveforms, channels, and durations can be found in the lesson introduction. For this example, we're going to go through step 11 of the data report, which is filling in the tables for the supine recording segment. To fill in the table, we first need to find the supine recording segment. To do this, we'll look at the diamond-shaped segment markers up here at the top of our waveforms. You'll see this one right now is active and is indicating the after exercise segment. If I click on the next one, we'll see that this one says deep breathing. You can click through the segment markers or you can use the left and right arrows at the top next to the event bar. If I click the left, it'll take us to now the seated segment marker. If I click it one more time, it'll take us to the supine recording segment. And now what we need to do is zoom in on the area between the supine and seated event markers. To do this, grab the zoom tool by clicking on it, and then left click and hold to draw a zoom box around this area of data. When we release, we'll have zoomed in on our supine segment and we can further zoom in on three cardiac cycles that we're gonna look at for our two tables. For this table, we only need the raw ECG waveform, so what I'm going to do is hide the heart rate channel. To do this, we go to the top above our waveforms where we have our channel numbers, and we can hold down the Alt or Option key and left click to hide the heart rate channel. To unhide it, we would just do the same thing, hold down the Alt or Option key and left click, and again, the channel would come back into view. Next, what I'm going to do is show the grids. This is going to help us to adjust our baseline. To adjust the baseline, we click on the Adjust Baseline button, and now we can use the Up and Down buttons to adjust the baseline of our ECG signal so that it rests along the 0 millivolt baseline. So I'm going to move the waveform up by clicking on the Up button, and once we've got that baseline centered on zero, can click exit. Now what we need to do is take a look at the table and figure out the first measurement that we need to take. We'll see that the first thing we're interested in is the P wave and getting the duration in milliseconds for the P wave of each of the three cardiac cycles. So first what we're going to do is grab the I-beam tool by clicking on it and we're going to highlight from the beginning to the end of the first P wave. Now what we're going to do is go down to the P wave line and right click in the cell and select insert single measurement value. Now we'll see we're looking for the delta T measurement of channel 1. We'll select this from the list and click on OK. This will enter the duration of the first P wave. Now what I'm going to do is for that same P wave scroll down to the second table and we're going to take the amplitude measurement from the P wave. Again, we'll right click in the cell, select insert single measurement value, and this time what we're looking for is the peak to peak value of channel 1, so I'll select that from the list and click OK. And now we've entered the peak to peak value. We'll do the same thing for the next two cardiac cycles. First, highlight from the beginning to the end of the P wave, Right click in the cell, insert the value, do the same for the amplitude, and again for the final complex. Now that we've completed the table, you'll see the next thing we need to do is calculate the mean for each of our measurements. For the P wave amplitude measurement, in the mean box, again, we can right click and select row statistics and then select mean. This will automatically insert the mean for this row. You can also calculate the mean manually with a calculator. We'll scroll back up to the first table and again calculate the mean 
for the duration of for the duration of our P waves. So again, row statistics and mean, and this puts in our mean value. We can now continue filling out the table for the other waves and intervals, and then continue filling out the rest of the data report. When going through the data report, if a box asks you for a measurement that you don't currently see up in your measurement boxes, you can always reset them to match. For example, let's say we need to take the peak-to-peak -peak measurement, but we don't see a peak-to-peak -peak measurement box up here. We can simply set it by first clicking on the channel box and selecting channel 1, and then clicking on our measurement drop-down box and scrolling to the peak-to-peak -peak measurement. Now we would have matched that to the measurement we need to take. Also, when going through the data, you might need to scroll forward or back. You can easily do that by grabbing on the scroll bar and scrolling through the data. And you can also go up and zoom back to zoom back out on the data, which will then bring you back to where you started. For more information about using BSL-4, you can look at the available resources under the Help menu. You can also watch additional BSL-4 tutorials online at www.biopac.com slash videos.asp or contact the Biopac Support Department at support at biopac.com or 805-685-0066.